Thanks so much, Sarah, for leading us in these prayers. You may be seated. And another one of the rich traditions we have in Judaism, in addition to these prayers that has been handed to us, is this cycle of reading the Torah. And so John is going to come up and share with us a reflection and a challenge from this week's portion of the Torah. So thanks, John, for coming up and for sharing this with us. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. <clears throat> However, Rabbi uh, asked me to share a, a, a little talk about Hanukkah rather than the, the portion this week. So, <clears throat> Hanukkah is only mentioned once in the entire Bible. That's in John chapter 10, where it said Yeshua was in the temple area during the Feast of Dedication. And of course, the Feast of Dedication, dedicate, Hanukkah means dedication. So that's where we see there. So we have to go to extra biblical sources to come up with the story about Hanukkah. And it comes from the book of the Maccabees. <clears throat> and the story is that in uh, 168 BCE, there was a Syrian king, Antiochus Epiphanes, who invaded Jerusalem. He wanted to wipe out Judaism and the Jews. He outlawed the feasts. He outlawed Shabbat. He even outlawed circumcision of their kids. Then he rededicated the temple to his god Zeus and even offered a uh, pig on the, uh, on the altar. The people were given an ultimatum. Either you assimilate and you bow down to our God or you die. Some of them, unfortunately, assimilated. But God had a remnant, Judah Maccabee. God always has a, mem a, mem uh, a remnant for people to keep his word. I remember the, the story about Elijah. Uh, he, was, he, he asked God, he said, God, I'm the only one left. And God says, no, I have a remnant. And it's at least 7,000 that have not bowed down to Baal. <clears throat> so Judah gathered his troops together. And they were greatly outnumbered. And at great odds, they fought the, the Syrians. And the miracle was, of course, that they won. And they defeated them. The next thing they had to do was to cleanse the temple because it had been defiled. And there was another miracle. They lit the candle. They went to the temple, and the, the candles had to be lit, and there was enough oil for one day. But it lasted eight days until someone could retrieve some more, uh, some more oil. Now, thus, we celebrate. They had the celebration called Hanukkah. And it's actually fashioned off of, uh, after Sukkot. It's an eight-day celebration of great joy and feasting and uh, all that kind of thing. So what's the takeaway from this? To me, the takeaway is this. Are we willing to be the remnant for God? Are we willing to stand up for his word? Are we willing to follow him completely and ignore the the, the call of the world upon our lives? Are we willing to stay away from, from that stuff? We live in a crazy world. Good is considered evil, and evil is considered good. Politicians aren't helping. There are some of them that are telling us that we as believers have to change our way of thinking. We, we, have, to, we have to forget about the, the, the baby in the womb and just focus on the, on the woman. What about the baby that is being killed and murdered? I think about uh, Peter. Peter was called into the Sanhedrin and they said to him, we don't want you preaching anymore about this Yeshua. And he said, I have to follow my God. I'm not going to follow man. We have to follow our God. We have to stay true to his word. 
I think about the song that Joshua Aaron put, to get, put out. As for me and my house, we will follow what the Lord. Shabbat Shalom.